welcome everybody today we are going to discuss the module that is memory hierarchy and the cache from the course of the embedded system so for a prerequisite to understand this module one needs to understand the memory which is discussed in the previous module so memory hierarchy is used in computer architecture when discussing performance issues in computer architectural design algorithm predictions and lower level programming construction such as involving locality of references so more specifically the contents which would be discussed in this module are the cache and its types cache mapping techniques cache replacement policies and the cache writing techniques so the memory is designed to store the program and data of the embedded system so the requirement of the memory is always the desired one should be the cheap and it should be a fast memory however the low cost memories are rather slow so there is a trade off between the cost of the memory and the speed of the memory the answer to this can be we need to build a memory hierarchy and demonstrate the kind of memory which should be suitable for the embedded system the memory hierarchy can be in a single chip there can be the processor registers or the cache memory these are the fast memories and the expensive cache memory that may be small to use to store the copies of lightly accessed parts of the main memory so that's a fast memory but these are very smaller amount of memory whereas there there is a need of the main memory which is a ram to for example store the phone numbers or the dictionary or the directory in the mobile so that can be a main memory there are other fast memories which are also less costly are it are they are the disk or the external hard drive but these kind of memories are not considered to be very important one for the embedded systems so this is a hierarchy of the memory so as discussed in the previous module the two type of ram are the dram and the sram the static ram is a memory cell is used which contains a flip flop to store a bit every bit therefore needs about 6 transistors it will hold its data as long as there is a power supply given to the system it is generally used for the high performance parts of the system whereas the dynamic ram it stores every bit as a charge on the capacitor the storage can be made very dense the dram will lose its charge within some particular period of time that is around 10 to 100 milliseconds for example so it is important that the memory is regularly refreshed if we do not want to lose any data out of dram so there were these are two different type of ram memories which could be used so basically the srams are used for small but fast cache memories and drams are used for large but slow main memories the design goal of the memory hierarchy is very simple that is give the illusion of large and fast memory that is exploit the temporary and temporal and spatial locality of the programs to achieve the illusion the principle of locality is the program access a relatively small portion of address space at any instance of time so for the bulk memories use slower dram and for the small memories use fast dram memory hierarchy is shown in the figure so the l0 and l1 in this the cpu registers holds the words from the cache memory l0 is a register l1 is on chip l1 
it it can be made of sram l1 cache holds the cache lines retrieved from the l2 cache l2 cache holds the cache lines retrieved from the memory so basically the main memory local secondary storage and the remote secondary storage which are the important memories these are stored by use of the dram whereas the registers on chip l1 cache or off chip l1 l2 cache are made of srams the main memory holds the disk blocks retrieved from the local disk and the local disk can hold the files from the disk or the remote network servers so in this case smaller faster and the costlier sram are used as a storage device for the cache memories whereas the larger slower and the cheaper can be allocated for the main memory and such kind of usage so memory hierarchy is a very important thing and should be considered for the design of the embedded system now we move towards the mapping techniques of the cache the cache mapping technique is the method for assigning the main memory addresses to the far fewer number of the available cache addresses and this is done for determining whether a particular main memory address is contained in the cache or not so this mapping can be achieved by two fields that is index and tag first locate the index that is repres which represents the cache address and the tag which requests which represents the content in the cache address so that technique is known as a direct mapping the other technique is fully associative mapping in this each cache address contains not only a main memory address content but it also completely contains a main memory address so in order to determine if the desired main memory address is in cache we simultaneously or we can call it associatively compare all the addresses stored in the cache with that of the desired one and the one which fulfills it this correlation is selected so this is called as fully associative mapping the third which is the set associative mapping is a technique it is nothing but the compromise between the direct and the fully associative mapping in direct mapping index maps to each main memory address to catch cache address but now each cache address contains the content and the tag of two or more memory locations these are called as the set or the line that is in order to determine if the desired main memory is in the cache we go to the cache address indicated by that particular index and then simultaneously compare with the tags in that location so as and when we get the desired tag that particular memory is selected and hence mapped so we now move towards the next segment that is the cache replacement policy so what will happen when the fully associative cache is full we need a method of choosing the cache block that needs to be substituted in such a case so it is observed that in a direct mapped cache there is no choice and a main memory address will always map to the cache address and thus substitute whatever block is already present so there is a choice of three common replacement policies the first one can be the random replacement policies this selects a block to replace randomly that is though it is simple execution this policy does not does nothing to prevent replacing block that's likely to be used again soon the next can be least recently used replacement that is the block which is very rarely used which was least recently used it can be replaced in the place of the block that has not been accessed for a long long time it it is replaced by a new block which has arrived the third can be first in first out replacement policy 
that is it makes sure of the queue of size n in which the block which was first input is replaced by the new arrival new coming block with that of the first one the next segment is cache writing techniques so during writing the cache at some point of time memory needs to be updated this update is not only the issue of the data cache because in inst instruction cache is read only but writing is also important factor so the cache writing techniques can include write through technique in such a technique anything written to the cache is also written to the main memory that is there is always a copy of that is available at the cache the next important thing is technique is write back cache which decreases the number of the writes to main memory by writing a block to the main memory only when the block is being replaced so whenever we do the replacement of the cache that particular block is saved as a backup in the main memory so this is write back technique so these are different things about the cache that is a hierarchy the replacement technique the write technique which need to be thought of and executed while implementing any embedded system thank you